Hello and welcome to another out of spec motoring video with the Lucid Air. This is going to be a quicker video, not a full road trip, but it's sort of to prove a point to myself. I always talk about electric range doesn't matter. It's all about the charging. You know, you get that initial, if you get a car with a big range, you get that initial, uh, you know, sort of hit on a road trip where you can skip a couple charging sessions. But then on a long trip, it all comes down to how quickly does it charge and how deep in the pack does it hold that peak charging rate? Well, except for cases like today, because we are currently in Pasadena, California, and we are going to Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 360, 370 miles one way. There are plenty of charging stations in between here and there. However, it's the weekend and they get completely full and clogged to the point where there's lines like Quartzsite, Arizona has lines out the butt. So what we wanna do is skip that. And thankfully we have the Lucid Air. So today I'm proving to myself that range is somewhat important when you're considering an electric car. And well, the vehicle we'll be driving today is this 2022 Lucid Air Grand Touring, and it is 112 kilowatt hour usable or so, has two electric motors. We have the Aero 19 inch wheels on it. These are the Gen 2 Aeros, the, the new ones that should be even more slippery. And um, we're charged up pretty high. We're staying here at a hotel and only six kilowatt charging means sometimes we don't get to 100% overnight if we arrive low. But Timon, what are we at? 95%. 95% state of charge, almost full. Now, easily the rated range of this car uh, could make it there. The full charge rated range by the EPA is 516 miles of range. That's crazy. But keep in mind that it's similar to Tesla, Lucid runs the five cycle and it's not really achievable in the real world unless you drive like a grandma to get the 516 miles of range. So realistically what i've tested is 430 435 miles of range at 70 miles an hour on a full charge but no one drives 70 everyone drives 80 85 so basically what we're going to do is try and manage our speed so we get to phoenix really low we're going to go visit our friends at new uh, where we've done plenty of charging videos and stuff they have some dc fast chargers at their company where we're going to film some videos today we're going for a launch party of their rebranding and then we're going to turn around and come back. So overall, we're going to go there, charge on a private DC fast charger, probably the 95%, I would say, and then see if we can skip all the chargers on the way back. What we really want to avoid today is hold up sitting in lines at DC fast chargers because the Lucid charges really fast, 351 kilowatts peak. However, we don't want to wait in line to get that. We want to just skip everything. And so that's what we're going to see today if the big range is helpful in these types of situations. And I think actually for a lot of people, these big range days are, uh, or I should say like medium range days where you're doing three, four, 500 miles. If you could do that on one charge, that's actually a really nice benefit for most people. So we're still topping up the car, just getting every last bit of juice we can in there. We're saying goodbye to the Polestar 1 until tomorrow and uh, Alyssa will be driving this car around here in Pasadena so it still needs to top up but uh, yeah let's get moving we'll put in the address in Mesa Arizona we'll uh, what is it right now it's 6 30 in the morning something like that time in yeah what time do you think we'll get there maybe 1 p.m here to Phoenix is uh 11 30 a.m yes it's only five hours yeah, 372 miles. Great. Well, that would be a stretch in my Model S, 372 miles. That would be my Model 3 can barely do 200 now on the highway after all the abuse we've thrown at it. So this would be really impressive for me if we can just skip all the chargers. So let's do that. By the way, the bumper is not scraping. It is the perfect height. Let's uh, let's rock and roll in the Lucid Air. Out of Spec would like to extend a huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is a VPN. It's actually an app that can be installed in all of your wireless and wired devices that creates a secure tunnel for all of your internet traffic to flow through. You guys know I'm always traveling. I'm always hooking up to public Wi-Fi, and with Surfshark VPN, I can now stay secure and safe from all of the bad guys at the airport trying to hack our very precious Out of Spec data. Just one account can be used across 
as many devices as you would like. That's perfect for me because I'm always bringing extra stuff with me. And another useful tool of a VPN is you can sort of tunnel in to your own market to a whole different country and access shows like Schitt's Creek on Netflix when you're out traveling abroad. And that is super useful for me as we're spending a lot of time overseas these days. And well, a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. For 83% off and three months free, use the code MOTORING. And time to unplug here. There we go. Nice cables on these actually. These are the uh, Webasto chargers, I believe. EVSE. It says download the PowerFlex mobile app. I don't know why, because they're free. You just plug it in, it works. Um, yep, we got a whole bunch of just snacks and stuff left over from the cannonball. The car is a disaster. I'm going to be editing some videos this drive. There we go. And we're going to be going to... Did you put in the exact address? Yep. So in Mesa? Yeah, way out of you, brother. Wow. We got the unit in... What is this thing? The R8? R8. Yes. Nice. Love it. It's really sick. Uh, so we Better use. Better than any escort you could ever buy. I actually agree. I, I mean, the detection on this, because when, when we were driving next to the Polestar, we were yeah. getting signals way earlier on this yeah. than the Max 360. Which, if you have a R7, you can get the same software that the R8 has and not spend new money for the R8. Oh, really? You just have to bootleg the software. But it's available off of like Reddit and other places. Like That's that. right. I remember that. Yeah. So um, let's do a couple things. If you just wait here one second, I just want to reset our trip. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's reset our trip information. Go away. Thank you. Um, we're going to reset trip A. I had to think about which one I wanted to do. <laughs> and uh, the one thing I just want to see is what is our rated range right now? Oops, and distance says 480 miles where we are, which I don't think you're going to get that on the highway at nope. this state of charge. <laughs> and we were average. Especially with my driving. Right. Timon's <laughs> going to have to balance the range versus charging thing. We'll use Dream Drive. We didn't do any of that on the Cannonball. Nope. And so maybe we'll try it out today and see how it does and do like more of a normal person. Why is it there. Exactly. It's like autopilot. It stays in the lane. Huh. Cool. Yep. And, uh, what else should we say? Let's just go. Okay. And here we are pulling out of the Sheraton here in Pasadena. This is where we held the EV media meetup with a whole bunch of electric vehicle content creators almost two years ago now. We had all the press cars dropped off right there. And yeah, we just end up staying here from time to time when we're in the area, mostly when we want to go up and spend the day in the canyons. This is uh, pretty close to do that. So pretty sweet. We are going to see what we got to do. So 396 miles says we'll be there at 11.59 a.m. Because the last one was just Phoenix. So oh, so this that, is the yeah. actual address. This is the actual address. Okay, so 396 miles to go. 400 miles. Um, and we're not even full charged. So can it do it? I think the answer is yes, but we're going to be pulling in on fumes. And if we need to charge, we can. But we're using the, the Lucid Air for... A little bit of a different uh, experiment today, which is pushing its range for our needs. Well, we are cruising along here, and Timon is just the unit in fanboy of the day. Yeah, the range is it's, it's over a mile. Yeah, for this thing to detect. Yeah, if there's other cars at least that uh, KA can bounce off of, the range is over a mile. Which it's is insane. Amazing. And it's so noticeably longer than the Max 360C, which used to be the best unit, or the Max 3C. I don't know if the C matters or not, but uh, really awesome. Also, speaking of range, Lucid. Yeah, we're kicking so far. We're doing great. We're getting 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour, uh, and we're 100 miles in, and it still says 367 miles left to go. That's a slow. Yeah, 367 <laughs> miles. I think uh, Timon's really making sure we can make it because he does not want to stop at Quartzsite and wait in line to charge. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're definitely just taking it easy. Oh, this Ranger looks sick. Ranger danger, baby. <laughs> that thing, man. So did you see that pre-runner Ranger yesterday? On the side of the road? No, he was driving it. 
Oh yeah. That thing looked so, so set up. So sick to drive. Yes, I agree. I've never driven a free runner. I also love how it's towing it at the rear wheels. I think you would that destroys it in the first hour of rolling. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> it's very possible. So uh, we're, we're really just going slow here, getting the range out. I'm editing our cannonball video and uh, doing the lucid thing. I feel like this is what most lucid owners do. Yeah, they, boring stuff. Yeah, they like drive. <laughs> really slow put the massage seat on yep. and then they take a nap they show up to a charger after 500 miles like, <laughs> yeah charge it to full <laughs> do another 500 miles uh, it's you know it's a different lifestyle than what we're used to but uh, i'm kind of enjoying it today yeah we'll see by the time we get there if we're still enjoying it but now that we have some extra range what kind of massage would you like sir uh, thank you i think for the way home though at night will probably be a lot higher speeds. Well, we'll see, because we can at least full charge when we're at new. Yeah. But we'll see if we can bump this average speed up 30 miles an hour. I mean, we can always Drop just stop time. and charge if we want to. Yeah, we'll see if we can make it down there on one yeah. charge. I think Might we as well lose. try. Yeah, I'm trying to think, because we left from Pasadena. We lose elevation. How's that possible? Because we're up in the hills in Pasadena, and Phoenix is... I actually don't know what elevation of Phoenix is. But I gotta say, I'm really impressed with this uh, 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. We are just kind of like going down as we fall into Palm Springs, but super cool. Beautiful day for a drive. It's 82 degrees and it's sunny. It's gonna be 91 in Arizona. Is it really? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, let's hope they put some good air conditioning in this thing. <laughs> Simon is pulling us off the exit here on Monterey Ave so we can get some Starbucks. Don't know where to go though. I'm guessing to the right. Power Fitness. Powerfitness.com. Oh, Power of Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. Oh. Uh, 0.4 of a mile. Directions. Yeah. Gold. Yeah, you're being tailgated by a bolt. That's how slow you're driving. Well, we got some Starbucks. Thank you, sir, for stopping off. I got my laptop charger so I can continue editing, and our efficiency is through the roof as we lose elevation and drive normally. You are welcome. This is the magic of Lucid. Yeah. If you drive fast, you'd burn juice in any car. But if you drive slow, this is a big car. Unless you get a gas car, you can go 200 miles an hour and stop for only two minutes. See, that seems like the future. <laughs> right? I mean, seriously, that's what we need to match. That's crazy. All right. And then we got a nice blacked out i3 Rex over here. That thing yeah, that thing is killer, good. man. It looks so good to have an i3S fully blacked out. Look at those rear fender arches. Wow, you could fit three inch wide tires on that. <laughs> That's right, I love that car so much. And we are now cruising uphill, which means our efficiency is dropping. But seeing that 4.5 on such a big car, pretty impressive. Really just shows no matter what you got, it all depends on how you drive it. And uh, if you drive, a, uh, drive it fast, you'll burn the juice drive it slow you'll save the juice and we like to burn the juice typically but we don't want to sit in line at court site so we are stretching it out we have a little bit of range buffer here but with some elevation it's a pretty good spot 255 miles to go 313 on the dash uh timon what's your opinion on dream drive um it's fine but even i don't use, rarely use autopilot uh when the sun is directly facing the camera like early in the morning yeah when left it's pretty bad um because you'll see sometimes there's a car in front of you when it's usually within distance where it will show up it kind of flickers in and out because the i guess the sun's just blocking oh sure sure um, but other than that it kind of just does the same as any other enhanced driving does just hold you in the lane I feel like this one's a little more sensitive that you're more on the steering wheel, but it doesn't let you know when steering just disappears. That's the sketchy part. Steering just shut off on just us. Like, it could be on right now, just like talking to you, and then it just goes into a dash. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, that's sketchy. It should like freak out when steering yeah, lets exactly. go. Uh, totally agree. But uh, the adaptive cruise you were complimenting. Yes, I think the adaptive cruise might be the best I've ever used. Right, and is that the distance or the slowdown or what is it? Uh, yeah, I'd say it registers that the semi in front of me is there and it's slightly reducing power so that once you get there, you're not like... Right, it's not like... Eh, 
like Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Tesla's the best at that. They roll up and go like ABS behind the car. Exactly. <laughs> okay. It really not understands how to manage speed. Like if the truck's doing 70 miles an hour and you came up doing 100 on the adaptive cruise, it still wouldn't throw you an ABS. Right. Yeah, I would. I agree. It, it has really good predictive slowdown. So nice. Well, we're cruising along comfortable car to do miles in and uh, see you along the way. We have driven 198.7 miles and we have 198 miles to go. We are exactly halfway. Let's take a look at our stats. 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. If I come over here and we put the thing in yeah, percentage. Wind definitely picked up, yeah. yeah, wind is picking up for sure, which is why we took it easy to leave. Percentage, we're at 50% state of charge and we left at 95. So that would indicate a 10% arrival if we keep everything the same. So I'm pretty certain yeah. we that's that's plenty. Yeah, we can, if we get closer and there's a lot more, just hammer it in. Yeah, that's right. If we got an extra, we'll just hammer it and precondition it. Cause I would like to do like a full charging test on one of those uh, new heavy duty charging stations that can do like 1.2 megawatts and that'd see what cool. the Lucid could take. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. max this sucker up. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <So>, yeah. <laughs> Your car burned down. Uh, yep. All right. Cool. Well, we are still cool. well timing. What's the situation now? We only have about ninety miles left to go. Yep, and ninety-nine miles left with the car. Yeah, definitely had gained back some elevation, and the winds have been picking up. So we have ninety-nine miles of rated range, ninety-three miles to go. We're down to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. We still have gone 303 miles and we're just cruising at 70. And um, I think we'll, we should be okay, but we're gonna be pulling in on, on droplets. Fumes. Yeah, fumes, droplets, whatever. Yeah. Fossil fuels. If there's fumes, then <laughs> that's really not a good situation. It will die. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that would not be good. We are now coming into some dead stopped traffic as we enter the Phoenix area. We are 57 miles away. We have 63 miles of projected range. We've had to go so slow this entire time. By Estimated so slow, I mean like traffic, seven minutes. Oh, seven minutes isn't bad. This is 42 minutes. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. 42 minutes. Oh, brutal. Well, you join us sitting in traffic where we have turned down the AC slightly because um, we really want to make it there. And we were burning a lot more rated range than estimated distance just by running the AC. Now that the AC doesn't run much and I don't want to make it seem like, oh, you can't stay cool if you're in traffic. There's plenty of chargers between here and where we're going. We're trying to eke out every last drop on this thing. So yeah, that extra 5% if we left it 100 would have really helped. Yeah. And this is why more than six kilowatt charging is needed at hotels. Well, we could have charged more. Well, we could have charged at a DC charger. Yeah, we also could have just hopped across the street to the 50 kilowatt. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. We could have put it at the parking lot across the street. For sure. You're right. But we didn't. That's on me. I thought 95% would be plenty. But nope. Time in is uh, pulling off for a quick uh, restroom stop. Should make it more efficient too. Yeah, so maybe. We're all stopped. Yeah, no one's moving an inch. That is just a completely stop. Whoa, it is boiling out here. Yeah, very bright. Very bright. All right, let's see if this thing will open. Key nearby. Yeah, yeah check that out. Um, no chargers nearby. There's one in a Walmart down there in Electrify America station, but time it. I don't. Oh, what happened? Oh. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Time and I don't know if you're gonna believe this, but the Electrify America charging station down the road, yeah, only three out of four are not working. No, that's not possible. Which means there's one actually working. <laughs> but I heard there's a line, so we're not going there. Yeah, uh, go. Yep. So let's keep rocking. And check it out, a Rivian Amazon van. Super cool. Love seeing those. And now we're heading east on 10 towards Phoenix. 56 miles to go, 58 miles of projected range time and things are looking good and stop traffic. Oh my gosh, there's the Newell coach. Yep. We gee. were right next to them. Good thing we... Uh, yeah, we stopped, one. peed, got snacks. Ice cream. Ice cream. And I got some of these Dot uh, Homestyle pretzels and we are still, we're actually making significant progress ahead. Yep. Wow, we just saved ourselves at least a half hour by just stopping. Mm -hmm. Nice work. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> One hour later, roughly, 
I don't think it was an hour. I it, think it was an hour. It took forever. Holy yeah. smokes. Um, we are now 51 miles of predicted range, 51 miles to go. So, hypermile mode engaged. Yeah, 50 mile an hour speed limit. <laughs> yep. Let's do this thing. So I would say time, and you know, when you are in a Tesla and the rated range is going down faster than you're driving, that's pretty typical. But even driving slower, it's very hard to recapture some of that range mm -hmm. in a Tesla because it's just so off. But actually, by you driving slowly here, just the last little bit, we've now built up a little bit of a positive buffer, which I don't think you could do in a Model S. You just have to go so slow. You have to do like 40. And here we're doing 65 and we're actually gaining on it a little bit. So that's impressive. Now we do thankfully have a slight tailwind of about three miles an hour, three to five, but it's better Ooh, than- very nice. Headwind. Ooh, Julia Quadrifolio with some lowering action. Almost got taken out by the oh. hoe. <laughs> it literally says, oh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Love to see that. But yeah, I mean, the efficiency is pretty good and uh, we're just cruising along here. So no no major complaints other than the 65 mile an hour speed we have to go. Yeah. We are only about 24 miles away from new where we are heading. And uh, I just kicked on battery preconditioning in the Lucid. So new is that uh, crazy cool, um, you know, sort of electric company going full ecosystem company, not like just charging or not just batteries, but the whole stack. And um, so we're going to celebrate the rebrand, which means I think they're going to let us plug the Lucid into their crazy 1.2 megawatt DC fast charger. And so we're going to see what this thing can do. I plugged my Model S in there and saw 260 kilowatts, um, which is, you know, 10 more than yeah, it should be. So it's 500 and... <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> this guy's about to... Watch out, lady. It's about to get into a fight with a woman over here. <laughs> um, uh, but all is okay. <laughs> now she's blocking traffic. Okay, all is good, and we are on our way to uh, there. I'm preconditioning the battery, like I mentioned. We have three miles of buffer. We're going to use those three miles up. And it's funny, when I hit the battery preconditioning, it ripped the AC compressor. So I think the battery actually got too hot just because it's 100 degrees outside and the heat from the pavement's warming it up. And to do a deep charging session, it actually needs to be slightly cool on plug-in. So the nice thing about the manual preconditioning option in the Lucid is it pre-cools or preheats, but we will make it on one charge from Pasadena to Mesa um, about an average of 62 miles. Well, we drove about 75 on the highway most of the time. Right. 70 in the beginning, 75 in the middle, and now 65 is kind of what we're doing just to make it there. Um, way slow. It still is faster to drive fast and plug in. Yep. Which However, we'll be doing on the way home. Well, maybe if the chargers are empty. The thing is, every charging stop I checked on the way between here was full. So this was still the fastest what way of doing it. What a great infrastructure we have here. Huh? Well, that's why you kind of need the range almost to skip the infrastructure. Because if we were going any farther than this, then yeah, we'd have to charge up and we wouldn't do this. But uh, I think a lot of people do take these like, I don't know, Charlotte to DC or New York to Boston type road right. trips. Where it's the Lucid possible. works pretty well for that, yeah, actually. It's doable if you don't mind going a little slower. Yeah, you just gotta drop the speed a little bit and then you can kinda go wherever you want. If you're in a rush, don't do this. Right, if you're in a rush, drive fast and plug in, absolutely. We are pulling into new. I think they have a little event going on. Looks like it. Ah, cool. And we've arrived with six miles of range time in. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, 397 miles, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So uh, we see in I see uh, Victor's e-tron over there, Maki, -E, whole bunch of stuff going on. So let's figure out where to park and then uh, we'll do the thing. More like yeah, we got to charge inside the building. <laughs> Actually, no, they have the charger out here, so we'll see. Well, guys, it's a few hours later now, and we have just had a blast over here at New, formerly named Atlas. And uh, you guys, if you watch Out of Spec Reviews, will be familiar. We're here basically to celebrate this, the launch of their new prototype charger. 700 kilowatt charger, absolutely insane. Has a cable that's honestly just as easy to maneuver as a version two supercharger that can support 700 kilowatts absolutely insane immersion cooling very similar to version 4 supercharging has immersion cooled cables love to see it uh, we've charged the lucid up again we arrived here at about one percent state of charge we took it out to lunch we're actually just 
doing a 100% charge here to get us back to Pasadena, hopefully without uh, stopping. It was a little bit tight getting in. We had to go a little bit slower than we wanted. So I think that last 5% will really help us here. But currently we are at 91% state of charge and we are just doing 60 kilowatts as expected. The car doesn't really top charge that badly, but this unit is just insane. Uh, they're gonna have battery pack storage inside of it, serious bits. I'll leave a link to uh, the out of spec reviews video in the description showing, uh, you know, sort of all this is about and some more stuff going on at new, but it's been fun to hang out with the crew today and do some filming. We love working with these guys and it's just been an absolute blast. So let's top this up to a hundred percent. And in the next, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour or so we'll head out and go back to California. Man, the range on this is great. The Quartzsite charger has been showing full all day on the Electrify America app. So have many other chargers in the area. And just being able to have this huge range actually helps quite a bit out here. And our friend Ben arrived with his wife and his baby. It's awesome to see that. Subscribe to the Jeeb's YouTube channel. He's got some sick wheels on this thing. Looking pretty good. And uh, we are almost fully charged by now. We are at 97% state of charge. and just about to complete in uh well it says 15 minutes so we'll just give it a little bit more. so we pulled the lucid off and here comes the model y on some pretty freaking good looking wheels i love how ben still has his uh wrap up here i'm gonna give him shit for it because it was this way when we saw him last time you know rocking the pink uh past here i only have hey i only have so much time i did however upgrade the uh uh you can't see it floor lights here. Oh, we got some puddle lights. Puddle lights, sorry. Oh, okay. What does it say? The pink pig. Pink pig, but it's no longer pink. But it's no longer pink. So but it there does, is... doesn't actually work. Yeah, it's shutting out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, uh, let's get it juicing up yeah, and see how it goes. And now we are heading out of new. What a day, Timon. What a day for sure. A long day. It's going to be a long drive home too. Man, that charger got a workout though. It charged like 30 cars. Yeah, so do, how do we want to do this? Do we want to hold speed and hope there's a charger open or just cruise at 71 um i think we just rip okay because we've already proven we can make it here on one charge and worst case we wait it's 15, gonna be 20 minutes the thing is we could go slow and make it back on one charge right because yeah, the lucid but it's gonna be very late by the time we do that and the chargers probably won't be as busy yeah exactly. so let's hammer down and Same drive us, drive brother. like normal people because we actually do need to make it back yeah <laughs> so let's do that. beautiful views here in arizona as always you know scottsdale everything around here is really nice time in super hot though. super hot that is the downside for sure definitely need the extra cooling package but we're charged up pretty high we're gonna just kind of rip it and stretch it to the farthest away charging station we can it's 391 miles left to go to get back to where we started and um yeah, we're, we're kind of sick and tired of driving at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. And it's late. The charger should be open. So let's hammer down. Whoa. <laughs> we got ourselves a Mustang timing. Not for long. Oh, God. I so. <laughs> watch it be a cop. That would suck. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. Here we go. Nothing. He's not about it. Not about it. Yeah. yeah. Automatic. Yeah. Those 10 speeds are fast though. Yeah, but they just hang revs. Gorgeous sunset this evening. Absolutely beautiful. And um, time it has a feeling I have to drive super slow. Amazing. Like a normal <laughs> person of society. That's right. We're not holding up the whole state of Arizona on the way back. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's concerned about range in their electric cars, but like you got to drive like such an idiot to get any range out of any car. Yeah. It's doable if you drive slow, but no one, no one drives slow. So yeah, like just stop and charge. You spend $2 on gas and you go. Oh, burble tune. <laughs> with the one taillight mod <laughs> yeah well I, i'm a big fan of drive fast and charge fast more than drive slow and get range but the lucid does honestly both pretty well we are now pulling off here in quartzite just gonna take a look at the um 
EA station, the supercharger should be around here somewhere. They said they're going to add 88 stalls. Seems crazy. Let's go take a look at those infrastructure bits. Well, you join us here at the Loves and Quartzsite, Arizona, charging up. And um, wow, truly a disaster of a station. I made a whole video on out of spec reviews of just Quartzsite's charging problem, if you will. We're at a 350 kilowatt station. It's limited to 50 kilowatts, they say. This one's limited to 50 kilowatts. That one's 150. It doesn't show any limitation. We haven't tried it. And then the one on the end is broken. And this is the, these are the four stalls here in Quartzsite that are CCS. Meanwhile, Tesla will have about 140. I got to do the math just on the other side of the road when they finish their construction of their supercharger expansion. They already have close to 38 stalls, I believe. So just an insane amount of Tesla chargers compared to CCS, and these are all, 75% of them are broken or derated. I mean, that's just crazy. Well, we are just about to pop into California. We're at exit one here in Arizona, and um, we stopped at that court site location, filmed an out-of-spec reviews video on the disparity of charging between CCS and Tesla, because it's important for people to know to make a buying decision off of what charging is available. Some people might be okay with a bit of, with a bit of adventure with CCS, um, especially with as much range as this car has, but some people uh, really will rely on fast chargers to get around the country and not sure it makes sense to do that CCS. By the way, that is the world's fastest Chevy Cruze. He just sent it by us. Um, Yep, so we topped up only, we, we spent 20 minutes at the charger, we got 20 kilowatt hours, which is really bad, and that's because all the chargers were derated, and the one we went into was claimed to be limited to 50 kilowatts, but we got 75 kilowatts, and that's because we have a high voltage wow. car. Yeah. We got the police. Yeah, nothing to see here, police. Um, take a look ahead, lots of activity. Not sure exactly what's going on as we enter California, holy smokes. Someone got got. Yeah. Or someone That's like crashed. like 9,000 cops for one car. Drug bust. Uh, could be. Could be. So uh, we got 224 miles to go. 70% at this moment of time. Plenty of distance left. Let's uh, head into California and finish off this drive. It's funny to think about that this is all about food and not about, like, did you bring mass deadly weapons into our state? Yeah, so listen, when you edit this, just mute this clip. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to California. Bye. And uh, hours later, Timon's back behind the wheel, actually. <laughs> and uh, we are pulling into Pasadena. That was almost a full day. Oh, it's wow. 1 a.m. Whoa, where are we going? <laughs> Making moves. Okay. This dude's like walking his dog. About. It's 1.30 in the morning. Courtyard by Marriott. Hotel entrance, self-parking, please check in first at garage. So let's take a look at the trip stats from today. We did 817.3 miles and got 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. We could have done it with just that one charge in the middle, thanks to honestly pretty good efficiency here and a big battery. So there is some magic to having long range. Doing that video, uh, nice Volvo with the good wheels. Yeah. That looks, looks pretty good. good. Yeah, nice specs in here, actually. Um, yeah, we could have done it with another LS400. Oh, nice. We oh, could have... Oh, <laughs> not a good spec on this one. Not. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, we could have done it with uh, just that one charging session, but of course, uh, we we stopped in Quartzsite to film that video. Which was worth it. Yeah, I think it was worth it. A little bit more... And then you were able to move a little bit here at the end, and we've arrived at 49%. And what um, state of charge? Take a look here. Units, percent, 12% state of charge. And we added, I would say, roughly 15% state of charge at that place. So now we just got to go find uh, the charging spot that Alyssa has reserved for us, and we are good to go. Mm -hmm. 